Hey. Hello. How are you doing? How is it going on Ethereum Belgrade? It's going very good. Everybody's hyped. I think there's a lot of interesting context here. So I think it's a really, really good organization. Okay, great. Could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Emilia Vukovic. I am the co-founder of Agile Dynamics Tech, the web tree consultancy based in Singapore. I'm also the president of Serbian Blockchain Initiative here in Serbia, and I'm one of the co-founders of the supercluster for web tree and blockchain, first mm -hmm. ever unique supercluster that's uh, developing and being starting here in Serbia. Okay, great. And what, uh, what is your feeling about Belgrade in terms of uh, Web3 development? Like, what does the vibes here? So, actually, there are a couple of reports of a couple of years ago, Serbia was one of the places with the biggest number of Web3 developers in the world. And I need to say that, that there are a lot of unicorns and global companies that were built from Serbia. So, Polygon, for example, Mikhailo Bielic, the co-founder, he's our guy from, from Serbia. Um, there are a lot of uh, our people in Binance, in Cosmos, in Algorand, so we're all over. This, this seems like a great uh, and big community. Could you highlight some of the moments from your talk as an event? Uh, so today I talked about something that's quite specific. Uh, it's asset tokenization. We're basically using asset tokenization as a bridge to cross the gap between the traditional investments and capital mm -hmm. markets and growth markets. So we are tokenizing FDI and we are doing that in the growth markets and we are bringing liquidity this way and we are opening the market for more opportunities and more investors. And that's a topic that's quite interesting because probably you know that in every country there is a, quite of a problem with the resolutions and uh, there's still not alignment on the development of the technology and the development of the regulations. And could you maybe like uh, tell us some of the use cases that can be applied? Uh, so the, this technology that we are building, the best use case we found is FDI for direct investment. And uh, to be honest, that's because we are coming more from the business side. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a business consultancy, international uh, consultancy, Agile Dynamics, that's uh, working in the Middle East and mostly and also in Singapore and Asia. And uh, we were thinking about uh, what's the best use case and what's the best use of blockchain? Because we saw in so many projects and there are a lot of cases that people put so much money into developing the technology and at the end of the day, there's no adoption. So I still think it's really important to start from the question, why are we using it? What's the context behind it? What's the purpose? And then to uh, develop everything else based on that. Yeah. Tokenization and real world assets seems to be like a very strong narrative and like that can bring a lot of adoption to this space. So maybe you have any like I mean integrations that are um, or what's the expectation of it the first? So um, we have a great relationships with the governments of the growth markets and different ministries that we're working with. And now we are at the point that we are uh, we are developing our own layer one. We are developing mm -hmm. the platform, the wallet, so it's all going really good. As I said, now we are at the point of um, making all right decisions uh, in the field of regulatory compliances, legal mm -hmm. framework, because that's right. something that needs to be spot on because we are talking about security tokens. And actually, that's something that we're also developing with a supercluster here in Serbia. Mm -hmm. So we have a department for policy law making because mm -hmm. that kind of standardization needs to exist at some point because it's going to make our lives so much easier and we, we are going to be able to function in such a more productive way if we yeah. can just use blockchain for its purpose and not to uh, spend a lot of time or thinking about how we're going to put it in a specific legal framework that's maybe not that effective. Okay, got it, yeah. We are seeing lots of adoption from the gaming side, for example, like mobile games or Telegram and et cetera, et cetera. What, what are you feeling about like adoption of tokenization by governments, maybe big businesses, corporations and stuff like how is it going? So on the gaming side, I think there's a lot of potential. And uh, one part of, part of, the, of our ecosystem that we are building is also a game called Astor Armadillo. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a game, it's like uh, you have a lot of obstacles, you know, those kind of games that makes you so addictive that you're going to throw your phone in the wall. So that kind of a game and uh, you earn tokens and that mm -hmm. tokens you can use at our platform to mm -hmm. learn about the web tree. 
Why are we doing it like this? Because when we're talking with our clients or with the people who are not in the Web3 industry, but they want to get um, they, they want to get educated by it, we cannot tell them go to, I don't know, MIT website and go to the course or read all of these books, but they will do the gamification. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're going to start using the wallet even before they are, you know, aware that they're using crypto or tokens or blockchain, and that's the first starting point. Because still, as I said at the very beginning, I think the the, the the biggest problem that we have in this field is user experience, actually. Yes, yes. So when it's easily to be used, then everything else is going to come in line. Yeah. So from my experience of working with the governments, it's a little bit different. Uh, in growth markets, they're much more open for strategic partnerships um, to make uh, policies that are going to be more functional for them, that are going to be beneficial. And then there are strict markets and they're like um, closed groups when okay. it's quite easier to get in. But I completely understand that because we need to be aware that there are still a lot of um, scam projects in this field yes. that flop quite quickly and that somebody is just, uh, you know, allocating money from one side to another. Yes, I'm completely against that. So on that side, I think that we need to have some kind of regulations. Mm -hmm. I am for decentralization, but I'm also for structure. Yes, right. Okay. Thank you for the talk. Uh, would you like to highlight something? I think we will good. I think you agree. Yeah. yeah. Justin, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I think you guys specifically are doing a great job because I think this is the best way to um, get the community together, to get uh, acknowledged, to um, learn about the things that are happening by asking questions and making a valuable content and sharing your values and something that you're giving to community. Because now based on this, you will learn something new and we will have a good content. So way to go. Okay. Thanks for the talk. Thank you. Thank you very much.